we, not? We've got former Premier League referee and, uh, and friend of the show, in fact, best friend of the show, Dermot Gallagher in the studio with us. You're more than welcome to pick up the phone and put your questions to him. 03717 is the number Steve, the Liverpool fan, has dialed. Steve, good evening. Welcome to the Sports Hi, how Bar. How are you? Very, very well, Steve. What, what do you want to say, mate? What's your question? Hey. Question for Dermot, really. Uh, we've just just on the subject of VR, yeah, we've had referees making split decisions uh, on on normal speed football for years. VAR comes in, we, we, referees now watch it ten times, ten times slower speed, ten different angles. Why can't a referee in VAR, that's a professional referee, just see it once at normal speed, like a normal referee would in a game? And if it's not clear and obvious, then the decision would be as it is. Has that been thought of? It's, do you know what, Steve? It's it's a it's a really good point, and it's something that a lot of people make. And a lot of people do point out things in slow motion always appear and feel and seem worse. What's your thoughts on that? Dan? I think a lot of it is uh, to look for point of contact, isn't it? The slow mo thing, uh, especially with tackles. We saw the tackle by Van Dijk on Saturday, and in slow motion, it looked a far worse tackle than it did in normal speed. I think that the idea of slow motion was to find out where he actually made the first contact and was it with the studs and when you look at it you see his, he almost brushes down his shin and then the studs actually plant on the foot and that's why it was a yellow card rather than a red card whereas if you see it at normal speed you may think that's caught him studs on uh, so I could see the benefit of slow motion for that but it, it does alter perspective at times but don't forget they do show things in normal speed as well yeah, damn it. Talking about Virgil, um, if he slid, Virgil, is he, is he Van Dijk, are you his mate? I mean, you, we're, you, we're buddies, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't, isn't there? Oh, Virgil. Yeah. Oh, Virg. my, my, my mate, Virgil. Your mate, Virgil. You Speed dial. Mean? You know what? Let me just call him up. Uh, <laughs> Get him on. Do... Get him on and defend himself. <laughs> Virgil. Yeah, it's me, mate, Jermaine. Yeah. <laughs> Getting stick by Kundi <laughs> Pal. <laughs> no, so yeah, so obviously when Virgil, Virgil if he would have slid in off the floor, it would have been a red. But the fact that he stood his ground, you know, and, and he, he wasn't going in with force, I think that one they got right. Yeah. Because he, he stood his ground, so he, the force that hit, hit, hit the player was him coming onto it more his foot yeah. than the other way around. Yeah, and I think that's a key thing, isn't it? When you look for serious foul play tackles, distance he's covered. And that's not me being biased, by no. the way. That's just how I saw it. Distance covered mm. leads to speed and intensity. And without doubt, the speed and intensity causes more damage the the closer a player is the less chance he's got to go in like that and i think you're absolutely right that's that was the difference i saw that it was a yellow card and a red card although mm. many people thought it was a red card i'm convinced it was a yellow card it's for me the right decision but it's one of those orange ones if, if he had received a red i don't think var gets involved in that no i, I get that and that's that's something that's the vagaries of var mm. you have to remember that it's not there to prove the referee right or wrong it's it's there as a supplement to the referee to help him um, eradicate some of the big errors. Let's go and speak to another Liverpool fan. Gary's dialed 03717 Gaz, good evening. Hi, hey, boys. You OK? How are you doing, Gaz? Well, welcome you. welcome back. What do, what do you want to say, Macy? I'm going to be a bit blunt, really, and just say oh, it, should, dear. It, should, it should just be scrapped full stop. Just have goal line technology. People back in the day, I've made one mistake. People would question that one mistake. It's human error. That's what sport's about. There's no human error in the game. And if there's only one thing to contest now, there's about four to five decisions that are getting questioned each time. Well, they're going back so many seconds or filling in whatever office with the mouse, checking the VAR. There's too many things. It's just one person. So, you, so, Gary, what you're saying is you were, you would scrap VAR, uh, uh, but you would keep goal line technology. Goal line but nothing for offsides? Sorry? Nothing for offsides? No, 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 just have it like it used to be. Human right. error. Right. You, listen, you, you, you'll take the rough of the green. Once, but one thing I did disagree with Jamos, I do think it's, it's, it's footballers that are underperforming. Did you need a kick up the backside? And, you know, even if it's, you give them, I don't know, three strikes type of thing, give three, three dodgy decisions over a period, but did you need to have a look at themselves? You can't just... Yeah, obviously, if there's if there's consistently bad, Gary, thanks for the call. Let's see, I don't agree with Gary. Okay, I learned a lot of people over the weekend say scrap VR. No, VAR proved this weekend, and in particular, okay, it proved it can work and it proved it can't. In my opinion, the, the Brentford game. Okay, mm. 
Yes, the, the Ivan Tony penalty, which I think is a penalty. Yes, the no Buemo doubt. goal, where it's been flicked on by the Leeds defender oh, and the offside top. flag was gone. Yeah. So those two proved it worked. Mm. I think Leeds were desperately unlucky. I don't know what you think, Jammer. Desperately it unlucky. Not, not, I think that is a penalty. I think VAR got that one wrong. Yeah. Yeah, he, um, he, he had his arm. Over, he was behind him for starters. Yes. He had his um, arm over his shoulder. Well, you as a, you as a f- front man, once you get in the box and the defence behind you, is he banging you know trouble? You've got him on he's banging in trouble. Yeah, because yeah. I know if I feel any clip from behind, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm go- I, I could yeah. potentially go down. Yes, of course. He's yeah. the one. He's got to. He's got to. You know, put the brakes on. He's got reverse back and mm. you know let me go free. But then I'm going in on goal. So, yep, yeah, he, he made a, a massive. You know, well, he made, yeah, but VAR. Quite in jail. Yeah, and they didn't. They didn't go and say, now, Jesse Marsh. I understand his frustration, but there's no way Durham VAR is going to be scrapped now. The genie's out the bottle now, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's proved that it, v, VAR is not the problem. It's the people administering, administering, administering the way that it is perceived, isn't it? It's the decision makers that are getting things wrong, and they're human. Well, it it was at the weekend. I think with VAR, you've got to decide: is your glass half full or is it half empty? And you can look back over the last two, three seasons. And you can find lots and lots of errors that have been corrected yep. that wouldn't have been corrected without VAR. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a massive plus point. People say about scrap VAR. Don't forget, it's not so long ago that there was a great rant. Um, Southampton, Watford. He yes. comes, Charlie comes, Austin. Charlie Austin. Friend, friend of the show we'll be speaking to a little bit later this and week. It, his words were, yeah. we had the technology, give it to them. They need help. Give it to them. They need help. Now, it has helped. There's no doubt about that. You know, we saw over the weekend, as you say, a number of incidents. What you have to remember, the ones that we perceive have got wrong or the ones that they said, the two that they have got wrong, they would have always been wrong without VAR. You know, there's um, there's lots of things where people say... Well, oh, the, should... the West Ham goal would have stood. Well, it, it would, they're, 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 but they're, they've come out and said they're genuine mistakes. Yes, They've right, actually okay. come out and said that. Okay. But Are you there's... talking about the Leeds the one now? Because they, they have yeah. they apologised for that at all? Have no, they come but... and said that, that's wrong or not? Are they not... But, don't forget, that wouldn't have been given as a penalty on the field no, anyhow. No, it wouldn't have been. No, no, and, you're absolutely right. And that's what people have to remember. So which ones have they have they come out and... They, so they've, the Newcastle incident, the um, West Ham incident, that they're the two that yeah. they they put their head above the parapet and said, OK, we're happy, yeah. hands up, we got these wrong. OK, OK, they're the two. Yeah. Uh, let's go and speak to Man United fan, Ali. Uh, good evening, Ali. Uh, good evening, good evening, guys. Um, first of all, I, I don't know why uh, bringing the Ericsson foul into the equation. I don't think that's a up for debate. That's a clear. Who do you foul. support again? Remind us, Ali. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a clear foul. Simple as that. It's, I, it's... I think that's where VAR has worked properly. I think that's it's soft. Properly. I think it's soft, Ali. And I don't I mean... think that I don't think you should go back. I think the referee sees it. I, I, I can see why you're saying it's a foul, but I'm not it's so sure foul. that VAR. At Can that I moment, should have stepped in. I'm not sure it's clear and obvious. Go yeah, on. just a couple of more questions to Dermot. I think a lot of the time, the problem we have is inconsistencies in from ref to ref, and that's the problem people have. It's not the VAR, it's not anything like that. It's, it's the inconsistency from the ref, from one ref to another. i uh, just uh, just highlight a point Dermot mentioned about uh, the goalkeeper, because the goalkeeper is lying on the floor. I think sometimes the reaction of the keeper actually makes the ref's decision. And I remember De Gea lying on the floor once, and the ref did not stop the game at all. Um, I can't remember which game Arsenal. it was. Was it Arsenal? Yeah, the game was lying on the floor and then they the, um, the scored a goal. So where's the consistency there? There's no consistency and that's what people want. We want consistency and I don't think VAR is the problem. I think people are overreacting. There's been some great decisions with, with VAR that actually, um, you know, that, that was really good, well used. And I don't think we should get rid of it completely. I think the VAR is good, but it's how you use it and the human error side that we need to eliminate, I think. Um, uh, and and that, that's the problem. And one more thing to Dermot. I want to ask him the question, why don't we talk and explain the decisions? I think if you do that, I think people will be accepted more because then we will know how you come to a certain decision. Okay, thanks for the call. Dermot? Right, well, <laughs> referees aren't consistent one-to-one because human beings aren't. It's, it's, it's impossible to get 19 referees to referee like robotically the same. So what you have to accept, as long as a referee is consistent within himself in 90 minutes, that that's acceptable, I think. Um, now Can the... we get your DNA, Derm? <laughs> right? Let's get your DNA <laughs> and just have 20 D- 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 Derms, VAR in, <laughs> one, story, one re- referee in the game, right? Maybe maybe, maybe get a loads more, running the line. <laughs> line right? just official. All, imagine just all Dermots. Dermots. I, don't right? know, I want you to. I want you to say. 
I want you to say, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Dolly the Sheep, we got Derm at the ref, right? <laughs> I'm just cloning it. And therefore, we would have... But you're absolutely right. Listen, listen we talk about consistency. We want consistency for our teams mm. and players. And as, yeah. as ex-pros, we want to try and be as consistent as we possibly were every single game. It's human error. You're absolutely right. Keep the calls coming, gang. 03717 22334. 